Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Big Questions, Small Steps. My name is Amanda and I'm so glad that you could join me today. In today's episode, we're talking about four holidays in one video. Why four holidays? Because they're all very interestingly connected. These holidays are not all from the same background. Um, there is one from a Wiccan tradition, there's one from Irish and Scottish tradition, and then there's also two from the Catholic tradition. And they all kind of merge together to, I'm certain, something that you have heard of. Um, at least if you're in the United States, you've probably heard of this before. So without further ado, let's get started. The holidays that we're talking about today all originated as Sowin. Sowin is a holiday that is celebrated by people who are Wiccans. Um, it signals the beginning of winter, which is frequently associated with death as things become dormant. Okay, so Sowin typically happens in fall when things start to get dormant. Um, this is believed to be in the Wiccan tradition when the veil between the living and the dead becomes very thin. And because it's so thin, spirits of dead try to intermingle with the living. Okay, um, at Wiccan celebrations of Sowin, there will be dancing and there'll be festivals and there'll be games. There'll be apples and pumpkins abound. So definitely a fall type thing. There will even be at its origin, the origins of Sowin, they would take these turnips and they would carve faces into them, kind of like an early jack-o'-lantern. Um, and they would certainly put a candle in for a light and things like that, basically to depict the different spirits and entities that may be encroaching on the space because of that thin veil. So that's Sowin. Now, Sowin through the years has morphed into what more people known as, know as Halloween. Halloween, again, originated with Sowin, but then they morphed it slightly. In the 19th century is when they morphed it more to accomplish more openness for all. Um, it was started in the Irish and Scottish communities, and they it would be a chance for children not to dress up in costumes, but a chance for them to get out, get some energy out, and get to know their neighbors a bit. So the children in the 17th century, I'm sorry, yes, 19th century, my apologies. In the 19th century, the children in Ireland and Scotland, they would go and sing door to door. And if they were good, the household would gift them cakes, like kind of like a pound cake type thing as a reward. Okay, now through the years, that tradition morphed into what in the United States is typically known as trick-or-treating. So it's very, very intriguing to see where some of these customs that I grew up with, where they originated from. Um, we were told growing up that Halloween is just basically a holiday, a holiday um, created by the candy makers to sell more candy. So in the U.S., they celebrate Halloween as a day of fun and merriment and make-believe. So kids dress up in costumes and there may be parties, there may be pumpkins to carve with faces or pictures in. Um, it's a day of make-believe. They will go trick-or-treating house to house and they'll go and they'll ring the doorbell or knock on the door and say trick-or-treat and then the person who answers the door will typically give them treats. Now, some kids trick or treat for different organizations. So instead of getting 
a food or a gift or something like that, they might get money. Um, there are also places that when you go trick-or-treating, they'll make you do something. They'll make you tell a joke. They'll try to get you to solve a riddle. Maybe you have to go through a certain path in order to get the treat. It's it's different experiences. Um, and I personally have experienced just about all of them. I do have to admit that as a child, I thought it was a little creepy and a bit confusing that I would randomly go into someone's house or garage into this haunted house where I didn't know them. I didn't know if I would make it out okay. It, it was It was a lot of uncomfortableness that didn't make sense to me as a child. Um, but I definitely enjoyed dressing up in costumes and I can remember some of my favorite costumes and that's, that's just what we did. We went trick-or-treating and then the big thing was after you were done trick-or-treating, you came home and you dumped out your stash or the, all the things that you got and then there was the big candy swap. So in my household, I had two sisters and we would frequently trade different candies for ones that we would prefer. And there would be a bowl that we would graciously, oh so graciously share with our parents because we didn't like them. And that's just how it went in my household for Halloween. Now, two other holidays that are right right around there. They don't happen in October. They actually happen right at the beginning of November are All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Now these two are also connected with Halloween. So let's discover that a little bit. So All Saints Day is on November 1st. Um, it's always known as, it's, I'm sorry, it's also known as All Hallows Day which makes Halloween All Hallows' Eve, and you might have heard that. So basically what they believe is on All Saints' Day, in the Catholic tradition, that's the day when they honor all the saints and all the martyrs and all the good people who have done things for humanity. It's a time to draw them closer, draw people closer to the church and their connection to the church. So in Catholicism, typically it's less about Halloween and more about All Saints Day because you would want to dress up as a saint or somebody who, who had something that you wanted to embody in yourself as opposed to, oh, I'm gonna dress up as a clown. And that doesn't necessarily have any connection to you, what your passion is, things like that. They wanted to have it have a little bit more meaning to it. So um, Pope Gregory III is actually the one that moved it to November 1st, and that's to be kept keeping it closer to the day that for the martyrs, and that's All Souls Day, and you'll find out more about that in just a second. Um, it is, it's, it's a big day in Catholicism, depending on how, how stringently you practice it. Um, to many, it's very similar to Halloween as far as the parties and the costumes and the, the trick or treating even is by dressing up as saints. Now, from the Catholic tradition, that's what they do. The Protestant tradition does something slightly different on All Saints Day. On All Saints Day, in the Protestant tradition, what they will typically do is they will name, and it doesn't have to be right on All Saints Day, but it'll be the Sunday that's closest to that. They will name anyone from that church who has passed in the previous year giving acknowledgement for them, their life, their soul, all their loved ones that are gathered around. Um, they will read their name once more and they will say a special prayer for those individuals. Um, that's what they do on All Saints Day in the Protestant tradition. Now, the piggyback of All Saints Day in Catholicism is All Souls Day. 
All Souls Day is actually a day that was developed by a uh, Clary monk named Abbot Odella. And he developed this day in honor of all the martyrs and Christians who died. So he basically said, you know, you might not have been a saint, but you still matter. You might have done good things. You might have fallen short in other areas, but you and your existence and your, your passions and your, your presence mattered. So he developed All Souls Day. And basically what is believed happens is that souls on that day, they can change forms. So the souls that are stuck in purgatory, so in the Catholic faith, once you die, you go to purgatory, which is basically this lobby elevator area of your waiting for judgment on whether you are a good person and you get to go to heaven or if you are a bad person and you're going to hell. You're just in this limbo state. And on All Souls Day, souls can take different forms to kind of trick or haunt people who have wronged them so that they can get extra penance or prayers or things like that so that their soul can move out of purgatory. Their soul can move to heaven. Their soul can move to hell. So they're out of that purgatory space. On the day of All Souls Day, many people will do prayers for remembrance of people that have passed. Um, I don't know exactly how long. It may be forever. So if somebody passes, you may pray for their soul every single year. That I don't know because I'm not Catholic. Um, and I didn't have any experience in Catholicism besides visiting a couple of times. But that is that is what All Souls Day is. It's for those souls, specifically in purgatory. And the souls try to trick people and they'll mess with them a little bit, try to haunt those that did them wrong to hopefully gain, gain waivers or gain favors to get them out of purgatory, to allow them to go to hell or heaven or to allow them to go to hell. Um, that's just what they believe. They that's what they believe. So there you have it. You have Sowin, Halloween, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. They're very intertwined. There are aspects that are celebrated by many. Now, do they understand where all of those things came from? I, I don't know. I know I certainly didn't know many of this, much of this information before starting this research. So the more you know, the more you know. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.